On June 13, 2025, Iran launched a massive missile barrage against Israel, dubbed Operation True Promise III, in retaliation for Israeli airstrikes on Iranian nuclear and military facilities earlier that day. The attack marked a significant escalation in the ongoing conflict between the two nations and exposed vulnerabilities in Israel's multi-layered air defense system, particularly the renowned Iron Dome. This account details how Iran breached Israel's defenses, the strike on the Israeli Defense Ministry headquarters in Tel Aviv, and the costs associated with Iron Dome operations. Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, initiated the assault with approximately 100 ballistic missiles fired in two salvos, targeting key Israeli military sites, including air bases and command centers. The operation was a direct response to Israel's Rising Lion strikes, which targeted nuclear facilities in Natanz and Isfahan and killed senior Iranian commanders, including General Mohammad Bagheri and General Hossein Salami. Iranian state media described the missile barrage as the beginning of a crushing response, with Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei vowing to leave Israel helpless. The missiles included a mix of medium-range ballistic missiles, MRBMs, and, critically, hypersonic ballistic missiles, such as the Fatah series, which Iran claimed were used for the first time in this attack. These hypersonic missiles, capable of speeds exceeding Mach 5 and manoeuvring during flight, posed a significant challenge to Israel's air defense systems. Unlike the slower, short-range rockets typically fired by Hamas or Hezbollah, which the Iron Dome is optimized to intercept, hypersonic missiles travel at extreme velocities and follow unpredictable trajectories, making them harder to track and intercept. Iran's strategy appeared to rely on saturation and sophistication. By launching a large number of missiles simultaneously, Iran aimed to overwhelm Israel's defenses, forcing the system to prioritize targets and potentially miss critical threats. The inclusion of hypersonic missiles further complicated the interception process, as these weapons can evade radar detection and outmaneuver interceptors designed for more conventional threats. Israel's air defense network is a multi-layered system comprising the Iron Dome, David's Sling, Arrow 2 and Arrow 3, each designed to counter specific types of threats at different altitudes and ranges. The Iron Dome, operational since 2011, is optimized for short-range rockets, 470 kilometers, and has a reported interception success rate of 85-90% against such threats. David's Sling targets medium to long-range rockets and cruise missiles, 100-300 kilometers, while the Arrow systems are designed to intercept long-range ballistic missiles, including those outside the atmosphere. Despite this robust architecture, Iran's attack exposed limitations. The Iron Dome, while effective against low-flying, unguided rockets from Gaza or Lebanon, is less suited to counter high-speed ballistic missiles, particularly hypersonics. The Arrow systems, which are better equipped for ballistic missile defense, have fewer interceptors and are costlier to operate, leading to strategic decisions about which targets to prioritize. In previous attacks, such as Iran's October 1, 2024 barrage, Israel reportedly allowed some missiles to land in open areas to conserve interceptors for population centers like Tel Aviv. On June 13, 2025, videos verified by news outlets showed Iranian missiles penetrating Israel's defenses and striking central Tel Aviv. Social media posts reported smoke rising over the city and explosions suggesting successful impacts with some users claiming hypersonic missiles had bypassed the Iron Dome entirely. The Israel Defense Forces, IDF, acknowledged that while most missiles were intercepted, 
a limited number hit structures due to interception failures. A particularly significant outcome of the attack was the reported strike on the Israeli Ministry of Defense headquarters in central Tel Aviv. Iranian state media claimed the IRGC successfully hit the facility, a claim partially corroborated by Israeli media reports of impacts near the building. A video showed a missile striking a part of Tel Aviv, where several military facilities, including the IDF headquarters, are located. The footage captured the Iron Dome, attempting to intercept the incoming missile, but the projectile evaded the interceptors and detonated, causing a visible explosion. The IDF reported that the attack caused property damage, but no direct injuries at the headquarters itself. However, across Tel Aviv and other areas, 21 people were injured, with two in serious condition, primarily from shrapnel or falls while rushing to shelters. Videos and photos showed damaged buildings and fires in the Ramat Gan area of Tel Aviv, with rescue teams evacuating residents. The strike on the Defence Ministry headquarters was symbolically and strategically significant. As the nerve centre of Israel's military operations, the facility houses critical command and control infrastructure. Even if the damage was limited, the breach underscored Iran's ability to penetrate Israel's defences and strike high-value targets, challenging the perception of Israeli invulnerability. The Iron Dome, developed by Rafael Advanced Defence Systems with US support, is a costly system to operate, particularly during large-scale attacks. Each Tamir interceptor missile used by the Iron Dome is estimated to cost between $20,000 and $150,000, depending on the source and production batch. A 2014 estimate cited $20,000, $50,000 per interceptor, while a 2020 analysis suggested a total cost of $100,000. $150,000 per interception, accounting for operational expenses. In contrast, the rockets typically fired by Hamas, such as Qassam or Grad rockets, cost as little as $800, $3,000 each. During Iran's attack on June 13, 2025, the IDF reported intercepting approximately 50 of the 100 missiles in the first wave using the Iron Dome and other systems. Assuming a conservative estimate of $50,000 per Tamir interceptor and two interceptors fired per incoming missile, a common practice to ensure success, the cost of intercepting 50 missiles would be $5 million. However, this figure is likely an underestimate as it does not account for other systems. The Arrow. Two and Arrow 3 systems used for ballistic missiles are far costlier with each Arrow interceptor priced at approximately $3.5 million. David Sling interceptors cost around $1 million each. US Navy destroyers fired interceptors during the attack, adding to the overall cost borne by Israel's allies. For comparison, during Iran's April 13, 2024, attack, which involved 120 ballistic missiles, 30 cruise missiles and 170 drones, Israel's defence costs were estimated at $550 million to over $1 billion for a single night. Iran's cost for that attack was estimated at $100, $200 million, highlighting the economic asymmetry. The June 2025 attack, though smaller in scale, likely incurred costs in the hundreds of millions for Israel, given the use of hypersonic missiles and the involvement of multiple defence layers. The June 13, 2025 attack demonstrated Iran's growing missile capabilities and its willingness to directly confront Israel's air defences. The breach of the Iron Dome and the strike near the Defence Ministry headquarters in Tel Aviv sent a powerful message, both militarily and psychologically.
Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed a response, while Defence Minister Israel Katz declared that Iran had crossed red lines. The IDF called up reservists and continued strikes on Iranian targets, signalling a potential for further escalation. The economic burden of operating the Iron Dome, combined with the strategic challenge of countering hypersonic missiles, underscores the need for Israel to adapt its defence strategy. Proposals for cheaper interceptors, such as laser-based systems, are under consideration, but these remain in development. For now, Iran's ability to breach Israel's famed Iron Dome has reshaped the regional security landscape, raising questions about the sustainability of Israel's defensive posture in a prolonged conflict.